good evening and welcome to the public hearing on behalf of the environmental uh, the department of environmental management my name is sean sibley i'm designated as the hearing officer for these proceedings the role of the hearing officer is limited to ensuring an orderly hearing so that an accurate record of the hearing may be developed for the department's evaluation i do not make the decisions regarding these proposed permit actions on behalf of the department we appreciate your participation in tonight's hearing for the following proposed permit action for Alabama Power Company's James M. Berry Electric Generating Plant Ash Pond in Gypsum Pond, located near 15300 Highway 43 North, Bucks, Alabama 36512. The proposed initial issuance of a coal combustion residual or CCR permit number 49 35 to close plant berry ash pond and to operate plant berry gypsum pond the purpose of this hearing is to provide the public with an opportunity to present oral testimony on the proposed permit actions in addition to oral testimony the department will also consider all written comments submitted before the close of the public comment period the department has requested your comments and we appreciate you taking time to make them known to us on February 19, 2021, the notice of the date, time, place, and purpose of this hearing was posted on the department's website and published in the Mobile Press Register. In addition, the department sent notice of this hearing by email to individuals and organizations who had previously requested advanced notice of permit proceedings. A copy of the notice and email distribution list will be entered into the record of these proceedings. Copies of the public notice, permit application, preliminary determination, and draft permit have been made available for inspection by the public at the offices of the department at 1400 Coliseum Boulevard in Montgomery, as well as the department's website. The hearing is open to the public, and anyone wishing to present oral testimony or submit a written statement may do so. Lengthy statements or those containing considerable technical or other complex data should be submitted in writing. Summaries of these statements may be presented orally. All testimony and written comments should be as factual as possible and should address the subject of this hearing. This hearing is an opportunity for members of the public to offer comments to help ensure that all relevant factors are considered before a final permit decision is made. Please be advised that the department is limited in the factors that need to consider when making permit decisions. It must base the determinations on only whether the permit applicant has satisfied those requirements of applicable environmental statutes and regulations granted to aid him by the legislature. Persons giving testimony may be questioned by the hearing officer or other department staff to clarify points and develop a better understanding of what's being presented. Proceeding tonight is not an open forum as in a question and answer session. This hearing is an opportunity for you to submit comments that you wish the department to consider in the final review of the permit applications. However, you may pose a, a comment in the form of a question, which will be uh, which will be compiled and addressed by the department in its complete response to the comments. In addition to oral testimony, written comments may be submitted in the form uh, submitted on the proposed uh, permit actions. You do not have to make an oral statement tonight to have your written comments considered by the department. Written statements may be submitted to the hearing officer tonight or delivered to the department in Montgomery as directed in the public notice for this hearing. All written statements previously submitted and those received by the department before the end of the public comment period will be included in the hearing record. It's also important to note that written comments submitted through postal or electronic mail are given the same consideration as those presented in person at this hearing. All oral and written testimony will be included in the hearing record. After giving consideration to the hearing record, the department will make its final decision on the proposed permit actions and develop responses to comments for the proposed permits. The hearing record, final determinations, and responses to comments will be posted on the department's e-file system. This hearing is captured by a court reporter to develop a transcript of the hearing for review by the department. In addition, the entire proceeding is being recorded on video to be posted on the department's YouTube channel to make it accessible to the public. And now, let's move on to the purpose of the hearing, which is the receipt of public comments. The order of appearance of persons giving testimony will be as follows. First, representative of the department's 
Land Division, uh, then a representative of the Alabama Power Company, then any elected officials or their representatives that pre-registered to speak. All remain, remaining members of the public will be heard in the order in which they registered in the pre-registration offered online or by phone and then those that registered on site this evening. I now recognize Mr. Blake Holden to present a statement on behalf of the Department's Land Division. Good evening, my name is Blake Holden on behalf of the Alabama Department of Environmental Management. Thank you for your participation in the permitting process. The James M. Perry Electric Generating Plant, permit number 49-35. Alabama Power Company has submitted to the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, ADM, an application for an initial issuance of coal combustion residuals permit to close <coughs> to close for the plant berry ash pond and the CCR permit to operate for the plant berry gypsum pond at the James Berry electric generating plant. The plant berry ash pond is a CCR sur surface impoundment located in sections 32 and 5, Township 1 North and 1 South, Range 1 East in Mobile County, Alabama, consisting of approximately 670.85 acres with a disposal area that consists of approximately 593.23 acres. The Plantberry Gypsum Pond is a CCR service impoundment located in sections 31 and 5. Township 1 North and 1 South, Range 1 East in Mobile County, Alabama, consisting of approximately 53.15 acres with a disposal area consists of approximately 20.43 acres. The waste stream for the plant berry gypsum pond would be CCR, including fly ash, bottom ash, boiler slag, flue gas desulfurization materials generated from burning coal for the purpose of generating electricity. The service area for the plant berry gypsum pond would be Alabama Power Company. The maximum average daily volume of waste disposed at Plant Berry Gypsum Pond would be 2,000 cubic yards per day. The proposed permit would require the permittee to manage CCR in accordance with the conditions of the proposed permit, ADEM Admin Code Chapter 335-13-15, standards for the disposal of coal combustion residuals in landfills and service impoundments and the approved permit application. <clears throat> Groundwater monitoring and corrective action requirements in a proposed permit establish a groundwater monitoring system of wells that provides an accurate representation of the groundwater quality underlying the units in the groundwater monitoring plan to establish appropriate sampling and analysis of the system to detect the presence of CCR constituents. For units where CCR constituents exceed acceptable levels, the proposed permit establishes corrective action requirements to remediate contamination caused by the units. Closure criteria in the proposed permit establish requirements for all units to close in accordance with the specified standards and timeframes. Post-closure criteria in the proposed permit require each unit be maintained for a period of time after closure, including maintaining groundwater monitoring and corrective action to ensure the long-term safety of units that are closing. Operating criteria in the proposed permit establish requirements for the disposal of C CCR in all units approved to accept waste, including the allowable waste streams and daily volumes permitted to be disposed of. <coughs> Plans to control fugitive dust and inflow design floods and inspection requirements. The permittee must, must comply with all conditions of the proposed permit except to the extent where the duration of such non-compliance is uh, or is authorized by the by variance granted by ATEM. The first variance request to exclude boron as an appendix for assessment monitoring constituents. Second variance requests groundwater protection standards of 6 micrograms per liter for cobalt, 15 micrograms per liter for lead, 40 micrograms.
micrograms per liter for lithium and 100 micrograms per liter for aluminum. The third variance requests the final grade of the cover system be less than 5% and greater than 25% as specified in the permit application for the plant berry ash bond. Based on our review of the initial permit application, the department has made a preliminary determination that the proposed permit would be in compliance with the applicable state and federal solid waste disposal requirements and thus protective of the public health and the environment. The proposed permit includes the following conditions. Number one, upon renewal, the permit would be valid for 10 years. Two, the permit would conduct groundwater monitoring semi-annually. Number three, the permit would implement and maintain a corrective action program. Number four, the permit E would maintain the integrity of the final cover system throughout the life of the permit and post-closure period. Number five, the permit E would at all times properly maintain the facility and all systems in accordance with the application of the permit. Number six, Permitting would obtain the approval of ADEM for any changes or modification change or modification to the facility or a system which might otherwise result in non-compliance with the permit or ADEM's administrative code. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to provide an opportunity to receive public comment regarding the application and proposed permit. The department welcomes your input to this process and will consider all technical comments prior to making a final decision concerning the issuance of this permit and will develop a response to comments which will become part of the public record and be posted in the department's e-file system. Thank you again for participating in the hearing. We'll now proceed to the receipt of public comments from elected officials. Not here, okay. Uh, we'll now proceed to the receipt of comments from members of the public as indicated in the public notice for this hearing. Oral testimony for each registered speaker is limited to seven minutes. If anyone's prepared a statement that cannot be presented in a seven minute time frame, please use your time for oral testimony to summarize your comments and submit your full statement to the department in writing for the record. Could state for the record your name and anybody that you represent, and keep in mind that uh, that uh, speak clearly so that the court reporter can hear you. Okay, so we can get it on the record. Can I take this off? Yes, sir. Please okay. do. Yes. Thank you. And then, uh, and please, please remember this is not a Q and A, a question and answer session. You just tell us what you want to hear. You'll have seven minutes to do that. You don't have to use the seven minutes if you don't want to. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. First, thank you all for being here uh, for what will surely be a passionate evening. Um, Alabama is blessed with a wealth and variety of natural resources, which provides significant. Stop you right there. Your name? Did you mention your name? I'm going to get to that. Okay. All right. Uh, natural resources, which provide significant social, economic, and environmental benefits and opportunities for the citizens of Alabama. The mission at ADEM is to assure for all citizens of the state a safe, helpful, and productive environment. You may recognize these lines. They come directly from the ADEM website. These words are your mission statement. I'm here today to implore you all to do your duty, to actually put the ADEM mission statement into action. For too long, you've ignored the runoff problems, wastewater issues, and industrial waste dumping that has decimated the jewel of the state of Alabama. I say no more kicking the can down the road. My name is Arthur Gonzalez. I'm a fourth generation Mobilian with deep ties to our delta, our rivers, our bay, our beaches, the Gulf of Mexico, and our many surrounding waterways. My family's connection to our waterways are why I'm here today. I don't represent any corporate or environmental entity other than myself and my family. 
so my family's connection to our waterways are why I'm here today so that my children and their kids can share the same connection that I have. I've heard many people say the coal ash ponds at Plant Berry are a quote unquote ticking time bomb waiting to explode. I disagree with this description. The one benefit of a time bomb is that you can look down at the clock and know when your time to defuse that bomb are up and it's time to run like hell and hope for the best. You can't run from this problem. There is no clock to tell us when the next great ecological disaster will happen, but it will happen unless complacency is replaced by the urgency to do right by the people you at ADEM are charged to protect. I spoke to my neighbor recently. He's a great man but he disagrees with my stance regarding the removal of coal ash at Plant Berry. He thinks the status quo is the best route forward. He asked me, what if you create a bigger problem when you try to move the coal ash? And I looked at him and I said, the bigger question is, what happens if you don't move it? Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm not buying the flawed logic because I know how to read through Alabama Power's propaganda. Simple logic and deductive reasoning tell me that whatever danger may come from moving the tons of coal ash threatening our waterways pales in comparison to the devastation that would result in a major breach of the already leaking containment ponds that sit a stone's throw from our rivers. As the old saying goes, the frog is already in the pot. He just hadn't realized he's being cooked yet. My great-grandfather, Sebastian Gonzalez, came to Mobile in the late 1800s and founded the Starfish and Oyster Company that was located on the Mobile River for almost a hundred years. Today, my family is no longer directly dependent on our waters or the natural resources they produce to pay the bills, but we depend on our waterways for so much more, the peace of mind and the pure joy they bring us. The Delta is where I learned to fish, crab, duck hunt, and where I've taught my children about the abundant wildlife we've been blessed with. The Bay and the Delta are where invaluable memories have been made. When we find a dawn speckled trout bite or see a flight of green winged teal committing to the decoys. And I'm sorry if I get emotional about that, but that's my life. The Gulf beaches are where we have enjoyed countless family traditions. Today, we catch a few less fish, we only see a handful of ducks, and when it rains, our rivers and our bay turn to chocolate milk. Mother Nature didn't intend for it to be this way. Unfortunately, the splendor that is the Delta, Mobile Bay, and our many rivers in the Gulf of Mexico are at risk of becoming yet another ecological disaster along the Gulf Coast. I'm here to challenge you all of you to adhere to the mission statement you proudly display on your website. Assure a safe, healthful, and productive environment for the Alabamians that live, play, and make a living here. It's nothing short of your duty. The cap and place policy proposed by Alabama Power has already proven to be inadequate to stop pollution from entering our groundwater. And frankly, death by a million small doses of arsenic and mercury doesn't seem like a whole lot of fun to me. A major breach resulting in untold levels of environmental devastation is simply out of the question, but we won't know until it's too late, right? Maybe we should ask our friends in Tennessee how that worked out for them. For too long, ADEM has allowed the Deep Pockets gang of paper companies, chemical companies, and yes, the power company to dictate to us how it's going to be. The line in the sand has been drawn. Tell Alabama Power to move their coal ash. Get it out of my delta. The impact on Alabama Power's bottom line is simply not worth the impact of the next great disaster for the people and the wildlife of the Mobile area and the Gulf region. Thank you. Jeremy Noble, is that right? Milling, M-I-L-L-I-N-G. Good evening, Mr. Milling. Can I take this off? Yes, sir, please do. And if you can, 
Uh, state, state your name for the record. Uh, I already have it stated again. And then uh, we're clearly talking to the microphone so the court reporter can take this down. And just please remember this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to listen to you. All Thank right. You, sir. I'll keep it brief. Thank you, sir. All right. My name is Jeremy Mellon. My name is Jeremy Milling and I'm a small business owner and outdoor enthusiast who along with my family spends a lot of time enjoying the tremendous water assets available in our coastal region. I would like to start by saying I have the utmost respect for Alabama Power. We believe them to be a good corporate citizen and provide a very valuable service to the citizens of Alabama. However, on this specific issue of properly closing the 600 acre, 21 million ton coal ash pond along the bank of the Mobile River, I strongly believe that capping the pond in place is the wrong decision. I had the same fear with this issue, and as I looked at, excuse me, I was alerted to this issue several years ago and I immediately got a sick feeling because it reminded me of the hopeless feeling I had after the BP oil spill. As I watched the environmental damage being done to our area and the uncertainty for our future. It not only affected my business but also the ability to enjoy the waterways which are so vital to our economy and the water related recreational activities we enjoy. I kept saying how could someone how could we let this happen? Weren't the regulations in place to prevent this? Supposedly they were, but they failed. I had the same fear with this issue, and as I looked at it further, and that's the coal ice issue, these fears increased. Why would we, citizens of Mobile and the surrounding area, allow such a dangerous thing to sit along the banks of the Mobile River, where there is a viable and reasonable solution that would protect the river the bay and our economy which is so dependent on the water from waterfront commerce at the port to the tourist industry in the delta and further south. So much of what we depend on and enjoy in our area is tied to the Mobile River and leaving the coal ash pond along the banks of the river puts all of that in jeopardy which is completely unacceptable. I've listened to arguments that having it capped in place is safe but I find that hard to believe when Alabama's power's own data shows the bottom of the coal ash pond sits below the water table and is continuously leaching carcinogenic chemicals into the river. Alabama Power has been fined for this, but it keeps happening. Even at their plant Gadsden ash pit that they closed in place, groundwater pollution continues. As you well know, under the CCR regulations, ADEM can't permit a plan to leave coal ash in place if it doesn't get the ash out of the groundwater. groundwater. Furthermore, the pond is held back by an earthen dam. As we continue to experience more powerful storm events and rain events, as well as continued development that pushes more and more volumes of water down the river, it is becoming more likely that the dam could fail and spill the toxic material into the river. We absolutely can't let this happen. And you are so important in this process and our ability to handle this potentially catastrophic situation in a reasonable and appropriate manner. I've been told numerous times that the cost to move it, in a, it to a lined upland landfill or recycle the ash would be too expensive. This seems completely short-sighted to me. Can you imagine the economic cost to Alabama Power and to us business owners as well as the environmental cost to our, excuse me, as well as the environmental cost to our community if the toxic ash is to spill into the Mobile River, carried into the Delta, the Port of Mobile, and into the Bay. The cost of moving it will pale in comparison to the short long-term costs related to a spill. Look at the catastrophes of the Kingston and Dan River coal ash spills of which the health and economic consequences are still being dealt with today. Why would we take this risk? Furthermore, 250 million tons of coal ash are being removed around the southeast. It's not too expensive at the facilities in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, or Tennessee. Please be bold and don't allow this toxic coal ash to remain on our banks, or excuse me, on the banks of the Mobile River, when there's a viable option to protect our community and natural resources. Other communities around the southeast have demanded it to be removed, and the Southern Company, parent company to Alabama Power, um, and other utility companies have done the right thing. 
Please don't let us be the exception in Alabama. Your decision will affect us as well as generations to come. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Blank. Hey, you good evening. can take your mask off. If you Thank want. you. That's if refreshing. You could, if you could please restate your name in the name of any interest organization that you represent, and then uh, speak clearly enough so the court reporter can take down what you have to say. And just remember, this is not a question of answer sessions. We're here just to hear what you have to say. Great, great. Uh, my name is Wiley Blankenship. I'm president and CEO of Coastal Alabama Partnership. It's a, a organization made up of uh, the largest chambers in both Baldwin and Mobile County, as well as the Airport Authority and the Port Authority uh, are organizations that, that fall under our umbrella. Uh, on behalf of Coastal Alabama Partnership, this is something that we've looked at very closely and we do support the cap in place method or the close in place rather method that is approved by the EPA. Um, both closure methods still in place and closure by removal require Alabama power to meet the same groundwater performance standards. Uh, sealing, in, uh, sealing the site in place avoids potentially uh, safety issues that can arise from trucking large volumes of coal ash through Alabama communities. This is something that we have looked at and we feel that is more dangerous if it were to be removed uh, due to a lot of trucking incidents, uh, um, accidents, things like that over the course of many, many years. Alabama's Powers Closure and Corrective Action Plan was developed with multiple third-party experts. The plan will not only achieve compliance with groundwater protection standards, but will also use the latest technology. Ongoing monitoring ensures the protection of our water quality for decades to come. The sampling of monitoring follows proven methods and meets all state standard requirements. Testing is conducted at accredited laboratories using advanced technology. Results of that testing is shared publicly and with state regulators. An independent third party has concluded that even a 500 year flood with an additional five feet of storm, storm surge would have no direct impact on the site's existing dike wall. Um, I'd like to note that uh, the dike is, would be five feet higher than the highest flood ever recorded near that site. Uh, Plantberry lies outside the largest Mount FEMA hurricane surge, uh, surge zone, excuse me, the most severe hurricanes ever along the Gulf Coast, including Katrina, Ivan, Nate, Sally, and Zeta, produced river stage elevations more Should than 50. Can you slow what? down for me? Sure. I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, would you like me to go back to. Uh, Go back to the hurricanes. The hurricanes? The most severe hurricanes, Katrina, Ivan. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Plantberry lies outside the largest mapped FEMA hurricane surge zone. Uh, the most severe hurricanes ever along the Gulf Coast, including Katrina, Ivan, Nate, Sally, and Zeta, produced river stage elevations more than 15 feet below the crest of the existing dike. At Plantberry, Material will be excavated and moved further away from the water, creating a buffer up to 750 yards from the river. In some places, that will amount to a distance of more than seven football fields, reducing the actual, actual size of the footprint by 45%. Um, so this is something our organization has not taken lightly in making a decision on uh, where we stand on this. So we, we uh, agree with ADM's original you know, suggestion of cap in place would be the adequate measure to take here. Uh, I do have a letter here that I would like to leave with you. It's a little yes, bit sir. more eloquent than my speaking, but uh, if I may give that to you sir. for record. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. That should be it. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Hey. Mr. Hill. Yes. Uh, if you could restate your name uh, clearly in the, in the microphone and any interest or organization that you represent. And uh, just that's so that the court reporter can take this down. And then uh, just please remember this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to listen to what you have to say. You'll have seven minutes, but you know, you don't have to use your whole seven minutes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. My name is Jeff Hill, um, and I'm involved with Mobile Baykeeper. Um, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak regarding the toxic coal ash pond on the banks of the Mobile River. 
For several years, we at Mobile Baykeeper have been keeping tabs on the coal ash pond at Barry Steam Plant, and every indicator points to the reality that we already have a big problem on our hands. The coal ash pond is and has been leaking toxic chemicals well above legal limits for years. So much so that over a million dollars has been paid in fines over the last few years. What's worse is that Alabama Power's current plan is to take a bad situation and make it worse by exposing our communities to a man-made ecological and economic disaster. That is, unless you make the difficult but necessary decision to do the right thing. While the coal ash pond has been a problem for many years, we're now at a critical crossroads where we can prevent disaster from striking in the future. We've got a ton of toxic sludge, well, actually 21 million tons of toxic sludge, sitting in an unlined pit on the banks of a river just 25 miles north of the Port of Mobile, which is the cornerstone of our economy by accounting for over 150,000 jobs and having an estimated $25 billion impact. The coal ash pond also happens to be smack dab in the middle of what's affectionately known as America's Amazon, which is far and away the most biodiverse river network in North America. We already know this toxic cocktail of arsenic, mercury, selenium, chromium, and lead is leaking into the Mobile River in our groundwater. And we've seen what happens with the earthen dams surrounding coal ash ponds fail. Google Kingston coal ash or Duke Energy coal ash to see what happens when these dams fail. At Barry Steam Plant's coal ash pond, we are one storm away from an economic and ecological disaster. However, I'm not just here to bash Alabama Power. We are all the beneficiaries of their hard work and their steadfast commitment to our communities. I'm grateful for the plant having provided ample, consistent electricity to our area for over 40 years. I'm thankful that they employ and empower thousands of people who comprise the foundation of our society, and I'm proud of the countless times they have quite literally been a shining light in the wake of disasters. Not only by quickly restoring power locally, but also deploying their resources to communities across the country when tragedy strikes. Alabama Power has led the way time and again, and we need them to step up once more and do the right thing and move the toxic coal ash away from the Mobile River Bank. It's no secret that the right decisions are also often the most difficult, and now is no exception. I acknowledge that the cost to move this toxic coal ash is higher in the short term than their current, and mind you, illegal plan to leave it there, but I also know that costs can explode when corners are cut. The stakes are much too high in this case to do anything but move the coal ash away from Mobile River. Doing things the right way from the beginning results in a better outcome over time and will ultimately result in a cost savings. Just ask BP. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you have it in your power, and, and ladies I guess on the other side, uh, you have it in your power to deny their plan to take the easy way out. Please, please, please have Alabama Power move the toxic coal ash pond away from the Mobile River to a lined container where it is not risking the health and livelihoods of our community. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Barron. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you, sir. If you could restate your name, you can take off your mask if you're comfortable with doing okay. it. Okay. Uh, uh, in any organization that you yes, may recommend. Yes, I am. And then speak uh, clearly if you can in the, the microphone so the court reporter can can take this down and then also just remember this is a not a question and answer session this is just you telling us what you want us to, to know and then you have seven minutes but you don't have to use your seven minutes okay thank you sir okay uh my name is lee Barron third i'm the chief of the moab Mount of Choctaw indians our, our tribe is in the north part of mobile county in calvert alabama citronelle alabama mount vernon alabama I came down this afternoon to speak on behalf of our communities and our tribe concerning some issues that we're having with this coal ash, how it's going to be disposed of, when it's going to be disposed of, and the cost involved in the removal of the coal ash. One of the things that we've been looking at is the number if it's decided to be moved uh, off-site and put somewhere else. We've been hearing rumors that it's going to be 
may be put at the turkey trot uh, landfill on Sam Lewis Road, which is adjacent to Highway 96, Corsmith Highway. With that being said, then the trucks would be traveling right through our community. They either would be traveling on Corsmith Highway, Highway 96, County Road, Highway 96, or Red Fox Road. With that being said, then they're going to be uh, doing things that we feel like that the coal ash is going to be uh, polluting the environment coming through. It's going to be blowing off of these trucks, getting in people's yards and on the highway and uh, everywhere else that we may have access to, well, sorry, where the cold ash will be, to coal dust, will be blowing at that time. Just depends on the uh, speed of the wind, you know, how high the wind is going to be on certain days. The other thing is we believe that if it's decided to remove the coal ash then it's going to add to problems that we're already experiencing in our community. Uh, when, uh, the landfill or the, yes, the Tucker Trot landfill was open. We have a lot of trucks, trash trucks are coming through our communities and trash blowing off of their trucks and it's ending on up our in our communities and people's yards along the roadway and things like this so it'll be another added uh, environmental concern to us. The next thing that I would like to say then is I haven't heard more than removing it or leaving it on site. There have to be more solutions to this problem rather than saying we need to move it, we need to leave it in place. I've heard from the environmental people that it's a possibility that the, if it's left on place then it's going to be a hazard to the environment, that the coal ash and the chemicals that's, uh, that's in the coal ash will go into the ground, get into the groundwater and end up in the rivers and affecting the fish and other things that are in the river and also the surrounding wildlife. I don't know, I don't, I'm not an environmentalist so I can't tell you anything about that. If you move it then you're, you're just moving it from one place and creating another problem for the people who are living around where you're going to do it. Because my understanding is that this is a tremendous amount of coal dust, coal ash that will be removed. So we have concerns with that. Uh, the other thing would be like, uh, for an example, uh, keeping it on site, using coal ash for other purposes. I haven't heard that, and I don't know anything chemically, if it can be used for anything else. Like, for example, can it be added to asphalt and put in roadways? I haven't heard that. So the solutions haven't been given in to me or to our uh, representatives in our communities that leave it on place, remove it, carry it somewhere that I want to hear all solutions to the problem. So that's our concern. And the other thing concerning this is that we know that when a, a company like Alabama Power, they incur <coughs> a large expense, then we tend to customers end up paying paying for part of it. It's not coming out of there all together. It's going to have an increase in electrical bills and, and things like this. So our concern is, number one, the trucks coming through our communities, because it will be a lot of trucks. Number two, the coal dust or ash, as you call it, will be going everywhere. And also it would add to the already problem that we're having with trash that's being transported through our communities going to the turkey trot, turkey trot landfill. And so that's that and then also more solutions or uh, more information about other types of solutions to this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Is that it? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, Miss Calloway. Hi. Good evening. How are y'all? Fine, thank you. If you could. Uh, Can I be nice? Yes, ma'am, please. And please clear, 
clearly state your name uh, in the microphone in any organization or interest that you represent and then speak, speak clearly so the court reporter can you know, get your testimony and please keep in mind you have seven minutes because you don't have to use I, seven minutes i will do my best not okay. to use seven minutes am i looking at the people that way yeah, however you want to just so the court board can hear you great you. i'm casey calloway i'm the executive director and baykeeper for mobile baykeeper and i uh, mobile baykeeper has been working on this issue for almost seven years because we work for clean water clean air and healthy communities we believe that protecting our natural resources is who we are as an organization we believe it is what adam's responsibility is as an organization and an agency um, it's your mission so we believe that you need to deny this permit clearly deny this permit require alabama power to dig up and move their coal ash put it in an upland lined landfill a modern landfill or require it to be recycled into concrete that's our very simple statement um, basically, I also want to say, we know Alabama Power does good things for this community. Um, they have consistently, they are the people we want to show up after a hurricane. They are the ones who are going to turn our lights back on. Alabama, Alabama Department of Environmental Management is the agency we want to call when we see a problem. Red clay running in a river, sewage spill. We want you to be the agency that says, I'm going to fix your problem. My job is to protect the environment and natural resources for public health and for the economy. And that's where we need you to stand up and get involved in this today. Um, we're going to submit formal comments as an organization with technical details. My, I'm going to tell more of a story today, but in line with, with those same comments. Uh, basically, Barry is 597 acres. Um, the, the coal ash pit at Plant Barry is not 597 acres. We know it's between 16 and 22 million tons of coal ash in an unlined pit surrounded by the Mobile River. It's 25 miles north of Mobile Bay. It is north of more than a dozen manufacturers who rely on the river for intake, for water, to process and to make their chemicals and plants and oil refining and everything else. It's north of the Port of Mobile, which is a major shipping hub, an industry hub for our community. It is in the midst of one of the most biologically diverse ecosystems in North America. In some cases, the globe. We have more turtle species in the Mobile Tensile Delta than anywhere else on the globe. It is north of significant fresh and saltwater fishing with an incredibly rich estuary teeming with shrimp, crab, fish, and so, so much more. All that populates and supports a thriving commercial and recreational fishery. North of Alabama, the coal ash pit is north of Alabama's beautiful coastal beaches that attract millions of tourists every year, bringing their financial resources to the, to the economy of Alabama. Um, and it is north of, of, more, of more than half a million people who love where they live, who want to raise their children in Mobile Bay, who want pe their kids jumping off of wharfs, who want their kids swimming in the Delta kayaking through the woods and through the, the 5,000 miles of shoreline that are in just our two coastal counties. And that's why I'm here tonight. <clears throat> I want to remind Alabama Power and ADEM that you have a responsibility to protect all of that. So right now, Alabama Power's own reporting shows that they are contaminating groundwater and they have been reporting that information publicly since 2018. Um, we believe ADEM has known about it since at least 2017, maybe 2016, but required to publicly notify us starting in 2018. ADEM gave a $250,000 fine one time every year when Alabama Power has reported their data in 2019, 20, and 21. The results are the same, no additional fines. Why? Um, fines can be per day, per violation, but ADEM is given one fine, one time, and we find that to be egregious. We also know that nothing is changing in terms of getting that coal ash out of the groundwater and, and stopping the contamination that's continuing. We know that Gadsden was capped in 2018, and in 2019, they reported 100 times the national groundwater limit for arsenic and a multitude of other contaminants. So what is different about capping in place Alabama Power's plant berry? What are we going to see happen over time? A wait and see effort for our community, for our environment and natural resources is not a path that we, we find to be acceptable. Lastly, coal, closing the coal ash pond in groundwater is in violation of the CCR. It's in violation of the coal combustion residual rule. It cannot be done and there is no way to keep 
that coal ash from being re-wet because of its depth in groundwater. And expert after expert will say the same thing. And that's what we've got to hear, have y'all hear and have y'all recognize. Then we got to talk disaster. So a hurricane, a major, a major rainstorm, sea level rise. All of these pieces all feed into the fact that we're seeing ground level come high, ground water come higher, the groundwater table come higher. We also know that even though it's dry and it's big and it hasn't failed before, does not mean it won't fail. Infrastructure fails. This is a unilateral, universal truth. Every engineer will tell you that over and over and over again. So we have to do something that, that makes this closure permanent. We've seen in, in February of 2020, just last year, before we were all on lockdown, Alabama, the Alabama River had its eighth highest flood level in recorded history. Every year we're seeing bigger and more powerful storms. Hurricane Sally took a turn that took it 40 miles east of Plantberry. We don't know what a hurricane would bring, but what we do, we, to Berry, um, but we know what hurricanes bring. Hurricanes are destructive, and we have an opportunity to do the right thing here, and we are begging you to make sure that that's what you do. Spills have happened. Dan River, Kingston, Tennessee, even here in Alabama with the Widow's Creek at Stevenson, Alabama. Failures happen. We have an opportunity and a responsibility to do the right thing. Close this pond by digging it up and moving it. Require, deny the permit to leave it where it is. Thank you all so much for your time. Please tell me I didn't go seven. <coughs> no, it's hard time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Rhoda Vanderhart. Hello. Good evening. Rhoda. Excuse me, Mrs. Vanderhart. Can you can take yes. off your mask if you're, if you're comfortable yes. with Am doing I that. able to take my mask off yes, in here? Yes, ma'am, please, if you're comfortable doing that. I'm and vaccinated, so you can hopefully not you get could, it from me. Okay. <laughs> if you could restate your name or any organization or interest that you represent, and then speak clearly into the microphone to ensure that the court reporter can take your testimony. Okay. And then, uh, and then also remember, uh, this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to listen to you. Right. And you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use your whole right. seven minutes. Okay. Right. Thank you. And I do have questions, but I understand it's not a question and answer session. But you, you can pose I just them. want to get it on the record. You can pose them for the record. Yeah, and, and hopefully somebody will be able to refer me to somebody I can ask these questions to. My name is Rhoda Vanderhart, and I live in Mobile, Alabama. <clears throat> I'm a registered nurse. I'm not an expert in environmental issues, but I have studied much of the information that is publicly available about the berry plant, Ash Pond. I've not yet made up my mind what the best solution to this horrible problem is, but I know that we as a society are all complicit as we have mindlessly pursued and consumed cheap energy for many generations without much thought of the future. I remind us of what Robert Louis Stevenson once said, sooner or later, we all sit down to a banquet of consequences. So with that, I have a few questions. I know that you can't answer my questions. I'm hoping that somebody somewhere will hear this and reach out to me with a phone number or email to get my questions answered. Um, I have viewed the hydrogeological assessment that Marlon Cook did on the berry plant ash pond and at the end of that um, video that he produced with his findings he recommends that simulations be conducted so that we have data available to predict the results of rising sea level, major upstream flooding and or a catastrophic tropical storm on the ash pond once it's capped in place um, and the, since Alabama Power has elected to cap in place is Adem going to require them or are they going to on their own conduct these simulations so that the public is informed about future risks to the community in Delta my second question is um, I understand that Alabama Power has chosen to cap in place rather than excavate and remove. And I understand that both processes require several years to complete. So I'm wondering 
how similar are the beginning phases of both processes? In other words, if they were going to excavate and remove, would the first step in that process be to dewater and consolidate? Because um, it, it, it's a question I would like answered. If that's the truth, then you know we can kind of do away with some of this hubbub and they can just get going on that part of it. Um, so that's my third question. Have they started? Uh, they've put forward this plan to cap in place um, and perhaps they have to wait till all these hearings are over. I don't know what the timeline is. Have they started yet their cap in place process? And if not, when does that anticipate beginning? Because I know it's going to take many years. Um, and then I also want to know, um, I understand that the ash that's currently being produced at the berry plant is no longer being put into the berry ash pond. Um, it's my understanding it's being trucked to the Chastang landfill, which I've done a little bit of research on and found that the Chastang landfill sits atop the Miocene aquifer, which supplies drinking water for various communities. And I understand that the Chastang landfill is lined but I've also read that even lined landfills can leach small amounts of contaminants into groundwater. So I'm a little bit concerned about that and I'm wondering, is ADEM require the Chastang landfill to be monitored in any way? Or do we know if anything's leaching into the Miocene aquifer which supplies drinking water for various communities? Um, another thing I would like to ask has anyone, the, the best solution that seems that I've been able to find in my research is that after the cap and place process, which I think is necessary what I can, what I, from what I can determine, just to dewater it, to, keep, to take away that risk of all that slurry sitting there. Um, it seems to me like it would be best if something's done with that productive and I, I've read that they can do fly ash brick, they can do concrete. Um, has, you know, does a ADEM have any influence to try to require Alabama Power to do that? Does Alabama Power anticipate doing that? Have they looked into that? If it's not feasible, you know, why is it not feasible to actually get rid of it once it's been dewatered and so forth? And then the last thing I want to say is I understand there are currently no contaminants found in the Mobile River itself, but there are exceedances found in the groundwater of the alluvial aquifer which drains to the Mobile River. I also understand that Alabama Power projects that the cap in place process will take 12 and a half years to complete and that it is required to continue monitoring these contaminants for the next 30 years. So I have two questions. Does that 30 years start now or does it start after they've finished their cap in place process? And my second question on that is, do they have a contingency plan if after the close in pre place process is complete, there are still exceedances or does ADEM require them to have another plan or does that down the road when that happens? So I thank you for your attention and um, I hope that somebody who's listening to this um, can get in touch with me and answer some of these questions so I can have a better understanding thank you very of much the issues. to deny the permit to cap in place this coal ash uh, next to the Barry Steam plant. Um, I've lived down in Mobile Baldwin County area for uh, since 1998. Uh, 1999 I bought property that's on the Tensaw River between I-10 and 
And I-65, it's on the Mobile Tinsel Delta. Uh, spent days fishing and and hunting there, and you know, boating and swimming. And so I'm, you know, I, I know Bill Finch, and I've read E.O. Wilson, and uh, you know, I know Ben Rains, and I'm well aware of the sensitive ecology and the, and, you know, rare biodiversity of the area, and. I, you know, there's no question that if the dam was to break, you know, the ash alone, if it did not contain, you know, known carcinogens or poisons, would certainly be a big mess, you know, in the river. And so the concept of just leaving it there, you know, uh, you know, I find unacceptable. So I, I, I could certainly speak, you know, as an environmentalist and a, you know, someone who enjoys the outdoors, you know, and the and knowledge of the biodiversity there. But really what's compelled me to step forward is, is I'm a physician and um, I just felt that, you know, it was part of my duty to step forward because of my knowledge and the knowledge of, uh, you know, the danger of this coal ash. So, uh, you yeah, know, I went to medical school, I went to undergrad at Alabama and, and uh, I went to medical school in Birmingham and so uh, I'm a radiologist and every day of my practice I see people that have cancer. Um, the uh, um, the uh, I was going to refer to my notes. You know, I mean the uh, uh, you know we all know that the human race is you know we our civilization has obviously been advanced by the use of coal and the power derived from coal. You know, since it was first discovered, but paralleling paralleling the use of coal has been the discovery of you know or in the use of the term carcinogen. I mean, the earliest occupational cancer, you know, that went with the, uh, was discovered in chimney sweeps in the late 1700s, and, and it was associated with coal dust. So, um, um, and, you know, since that time, you know, we now know that numerous types of cancers, you know, liver, prostate, bladder, stomach, skin, are all linked to substances in coal ash. Um, there's, you know, there's already been, you know, measurements around this, this ash pile of arsenic, you know, which is a human carcinogen. Uh, you know, these things are, are facts now. They're not, you know, it's not a theory. Um, and so if you were to put this material, and so then if you understand how these substances and these toxic uh, metals seep into the ground in the groundwater, which it's well documented that they do when this coal ash is placed, you know, anywhere. If you were trying to design a way to poison the water system, I mean, it's not just carcinogens in humans, but, you know, this substances kill anything on the food chain from, you know, single cell animals to insects to humans. But if you were like, let's figure out a way to get it into the water system, you would put it in an unlined pit, you know, below the water system, next to a major river. I mean, it's like a, a, a you know, a, 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 I mean, you couldn't devise a better way to pollute, to put the poison from this material into the water system. So the concept of leaving it there and capping it in place and thinking that that's, you know, acceptable is, you know, to me it's just, uh, I don't know, it's hard to understand. Um, having friends and relatives that have suffered from cancer and know people in this area that have developed cancer, knowing that the material in this ash causes cancer and the way it's sitting allows it to continue to flow into the environment. Um, there's no telling how many cancers that I've seen personally in 22 years of practice are related to this coal ash. I mean, I know people that swim, I mean, there's people swimming in the river and the bays, you know, this evening. Um, it's just what people do down there. So, um, you know, so to allow it to continue, I mean, we, you know, maybe 30 years ago, nobody knew, or 100 years ago, but we know now that these substances in this ash cause disease in humans, not to mention all the other animals. So I'm here, I feel like it's my medical duty to ask 
ADEM to not approve a permit to continue to poison our environment. So that's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. We're going to take a seven minute break. Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Cunningham. You're welcome to take off your mask oh, if thank you're comfortable bless doing you. that. It's cool in here. And, uh, if you could uh, restate your name for the record, we've got a court reporter taking down your testimony, so speak clearly into the microphone. And just remember, this is not a question and answer session. You're just here to tell you, tell us what you want to speak. I appreciate it. Know. And then, uh, of course, you have seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes. Well, I understand. I can appreciate that right. from your point of view. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm William Mitchell Cunningham, Jr. I live in Josephine, Alabama, which is down near Alberta and Gulf Shores. I live on Arnica Bay. I'm a trying to retire lawyer. I am a member of the Baldwin County Democratic Executive Committee, and that's the organization that asked me to speak. I have personal interests and concerns, and interests and concerns on behalf of the citizens of Baldwin County to the proposed cap on this pit, coal ash pit at the Barry Steam Plant. I understand from looking online that all the commissioners are appointed by a Republican governor. And I'm here as a representative of the Democratic Party in Baldwin County. But this isn't a political issue. This is an issue about what's best for Alabama. It's such an important issue that I had to come and oppose it. As Democrats, we care about clean air and water. We care about the preservation and protection of our natural resources. We care about our, our wildlife, and we care about economic opportunity and taking care of the bountiful nature that has been provided in Alabama. I expect you'll hear me repeat what you are going to hear 40 or 50 other people say. And I'm not going to apologize for that. We and Alabama Power know there's a better way to handle this issue. You can remove this coal ash, put it up land, put it in a line pit, a line landfill, or recycle it into concrete. Why leave it there and cap it and hope that it doesn't escape and then abandon it after 30 years to the people of Alabama? Now I'm going to get a little personal. I live on Arnica Bay. Hurricane Sally beat my house, the eye of the wall of that hurricane beat my house for over two hours. I had four feet of water. I don't have a house to live in. I was living there in 2014 when we got 25 inches of rain and I had four feet of water in my yard again. I lived there during the BP oil leak. I lived there for Katrina and the eight or ten other storms we had that year and I lived there when Ivan came through and gave me six feet of water. With our recent tornadoes and river floods we are looking at a disaster waiting to happen. I remember as a 13 year old a 1961 rain I lived in Jackson Alabama at the time and it was a mile across the Tom Bigby River at that bridge if you've been there before more than a mile across. I listed some major river floods that we've had in Alabama. Luckily, we hadn't had one since they put in this pit. But it's going, it's going to happen. Water from one of these sources is going to inundate that coal ash pit, that cap or no cap, and it's going to create havoc with our environment. And I propose with our economy. When I, I have a, I thought I was supposed to give a summary. I have a summary here. When I wrote it, I originally said, can you imagine having a river, having a pit next to a river? I took out the imagine. We have it. We have it on a river next to, that goes down to the Port of Mobile and its shipping industry, a river that leads to Mobile Bay and its tourist industry, a bay that leads to the Gulf. But more importantly, we have a river next to America's Amazon, the Mobile Delta. I bought a copy of America's Amazon. I'll leave it with you. I imagine you, I saw you had Casey in here a little while ago. I'm sure she'll provide you with a copy 
it's easy to get online. I'm not, and if you do, watch it over and over again. I'm not E.O. Wilson. I'm not Ben Range. I'm a hunter. Yes, Democrats. Some Democrats own guns. I'm a fisherman. I love the shrimp. I love the crab. I cannot imagine not doing it like I wasn't able to do it in 2010. You all know what the American Amazon holds. More species, aquatic species than any other place in the world. 384 species of fish, salamanders, turtles, more than any other place in the world. More plant species than any other place in the U.S. And every plant in the United States is in that delta. And those tidal waters bring the fish, bring the shrimp, bring the crab larvae into the delta. It's a floodplain. And what happens on floodplains? They flood. Floodplains don't need coal ash. This rich, diverse area needs to be protected. We hadn't done a very good job in Alabama in the past. And I think you now see that task and can do something about it. Can we reverse it? Maybe. Can we do something to prevent it? Certainly. And this is the first step that y'all can take to do it. The American Amazon will remind you that mud is lethal to the Delta. We don't need to mix it with coal ash. You all know, you've heard about the unlined pit and the arsenic that's going out and the underground water system. I'm going to sum up. We have a national treasure. Let's don't risk it. You've seen the report from HydroGeo that it's not going to work with 21 million tons of ash in an online pit. AP should be required to move their coal ash to modern line upland landfills, properly managed. Utilities across the south are doing it. There's no reason that Alabama Power can't do it, and frankly, they have the money to do it. So I'm asking you, let's not play Russian roulette with this coal ash. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want the, yes, I made sir, seven I copies. I didn't know exactly. I didn't want to put that in the records. Sir. Uh, and do you want this? It, it's up to you. If you want to put it in the record, we'll I do it. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you all Thank for listening to me and for having me. Appreciate it. Clint Martin. Good evening, Mr. Martin. How you doing? Fine, sir. Good. If you could, you're welcome to take off your mask if you want to. Uh, if you're not comfortable, that's fine too. Uh, that's fine. If you could speak clearly in the microphone and restate your name in any organization that you represent. And then uh, that's so the court reporter can, can take this down. And then also remember that this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to, to listen to what you have to tell us. And then you've got seven minutes. But you don't have to use the full set. Oh, I'm going to use all seven minutes. Okay. That's like a bad postmaster's convention. I'm sure for y'all. Um, how close do I need to speak? Oh, and we, we can hear you pretty well. You can hear it? Okay. Yeah, you can just tell us your name. Yeah. All right, Clint Martin. Okay. All right, the fact that we're here tonight even to consider issuing a permit to cap in place coal ash, leaching toxic chemicals into our groundwater already that sits on the banks of the Mobile River, which flows into one of the most biologically diverse ecosystems in the nation, to me is pure idiocracy. And I don't know, who am I speaking to here? You're speaking to all of us, but most importantly, we want the court reporter to be able to take down what you're saying. You! Speak I don't know if you're familiar with the movie of the same name, Idiocracy, if you haven't seen it before you issue this permit or make a decision, I highly recommend you do so. Luke Wilson, Terry Crews, amazing. But it, that movie reminded me of, of tonight a little bit in that if someone speaks in favor of issuing a permit to cap this toxic coal ash in place, if that same person would not also argue that Brondo is what plants crave, I'll tell you what they don't crave. They don't crave coal ash. Plants don't crave toxic sludge. Mercury, lead, chromium, arsenic. It's not what they crave. Now I'm sure you all are already well aware of the dangers that exist if you issue a permit to cap in place. Groundwater pollution, structural damage. 
structural failure. And I'm also sure that you all are aware that other states, for good reason, have made the decision to remove coal ash in similar ponds such as plant bearing. You know, some have done it too late, sudden. Don't let Alabama Power follow in the footsteps of Duke Energy Sutton, where they knew a danger existed and willfully choose not to do anything about it. And let's not have a replay of Kingston, Tennessee. My God, Plant Berry would make Kingston, Tennessee look like child's play. Now, I don't recall if Alabama Power is arguing that that structure, the dam, will withstand a 100-year flood or a 500-year flood. I really don't recall, but let's just say 500 for argument's sake. Seems like long odds. You all should know that that doesn't mean there's a one every 500 years that event would occur. It's in any given year, there's a one in 500 chance. Seems like pretty long odds still. And I was trying to think about that. You know, I went to one of my kids' fundraisers at their high school where they did a drawdown. And I'm in a room with about 500 people. And everybody gets issued a number, they eliminate numbers one by one until the last person holding the number that hasn't been eliminated wins. Now, if I've got a one in 500 chance, I've, I've got a lot of hope. You know, especially if the week prior I played the Powerball, my chances were one in 292 million. One in 500 doesn't seem so bad. And just ask Houston, Texas about 500 year floods. They had three back to back to back, 2014, 15, and 16. 2016, the U.S. had three 1,000 year floods. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and where. And it's just going to take that one hurricane that doesn't cooperate. The right trajectory, the right wind speed, the right movement, and if I said hurricane, tropical storm, rain event, weather event, it doesn't matter. It's just going to take that one and if you decide to issue this permit, you're going to be sitting at home one night watching the weather guy talk about all those factors converging. And you're going to have a Rick Perry 2011 presidential debate moment. Oops. And you're going to wake up the next morning, there's going to be a news helicopter flying over the Delta. 21 billion tons of toxic coal ash coming down the Mobile River. Hundreds of thousands of residents downstream. Their odds of cancer just went up tenfold. You know the dangers that exist. Deny the permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Jones. Hello. If you could, if you're comfortable taking off your mask, you can do so if you want to. Uh, and if you could, yes, sir, there's that with me. Thank you very much. And then, uh, if you could clearly restate your name, uh, any interest that the organization that you represent, and then uh, and just speak clearly so the court reporter can take down your testimony. Uh, remember, this is not a question and answer session. Right here, just to listen to you. And then you have seven minutes, but you don't have to take the whole seven minutes if you don't want to. So I gotcha. Thank you, sir. All right. Good evening. My name is Tim Jones. I live in Baldwin County. I fish and hunt in the Mobile Tinsaw Delta, and I also run a small nonprofit called the Feral Hog Concern. Our main mission is to take people who may not have the resources or knowledge to hunt feral hogs in the Delta. I've piloted individuals from out of state and I've piloted local fathers with their young sons through our Palmetto Line Creeks looking for hogs. Whether or not we take our targeted quarry is a mixed bag, but the one thing all of my guests come away with is a profound appreciation for the seemingly untouched beauty of our hidden gem that is the Mobile Tensaw Delta. The last two years were difficult to put people on hogs due to historic flooding in our river system. 
there were days where there was no dry land in the delta between Mobile and Baldwin counties. It was a very dynamic environment. I don't see how Alabama Power can honestly assure us that with their cap and place plan, that there's no way that toxic waste from their plant will enter our waterways. Alabama Power likes to cite a study that states that two thirds of coal ash ponds across the country are capped in place. This is a logical fallacy to use the statistic as proper rationale for leaving toxic sludge yards away from a dynamic river system that not only is affected by rainfall from the majority of the state, but is also heavily affected by hurricanes and the resultant storm surge. Are two thirds of the cap and place sites affected by flooding and storm surge? I don't know. I assume y'all don't know either. Please keep in mind that Alabama Power originally planned to remove the fly ash until a more cost effective solution was found. Cost effective is a positive way to connotate the word cheaper. Alabama Power was fined by the state maximum for a cap and place pit in Gadsden because it leaks. Geographically, the Gadsden Pond is not affected by statewide rainfall like our Delta. Geographically, the Gadsden Pond is not affected by storm surge. If Alabama Power cannot properly address this issue on a much smaller scale in a more stable environment, why are we trusting them to do the same in an area that some call North America's Amazon River Basin? We have an opportunity here to do the right thing for our Delta. We have an opportunity to do the right thing for our kids and our future generations. Let's not let the company that in 2018 boasted a $237 million profit over the industry average complain about the cost of fixing its toxic waste problem. Please make a decision as though you personally will have to answer for the results. Please make a decision that you will be proud to tell your grandkids that you made. A decision that your grandkids will be proud to tell their grandkids about your role in this decision. Do you want to be a part of the group that decides to remove toxic sludge from a national treasure or part of a group that says, let's leave it until this is someone else's problem? This is ultimately what we are deciding. Thank you, sir. I can leave this one with you if you... Is it the same? It's the same. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank, All right. you, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Patrick Cable. Good evening. Mr. Evening. Hinkle, is that right? Kegel. Kegel, okay. Uh, Mr. Kegel, uh, you, you're okay to take off your mask? So okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you can, clearly restate your name and any interest that the organization that you represent. And then uh, speak clearly so the uh, court reporter can hear you and, uh, right. and take down your testimony. And please remember, this is not a question and answer session. It's just you telling us what you want us to hear. And then, of course, you have seven minutes. But you don't have to use the seven minutes if you don't want to. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Patrick Cable. I'm president of the Alabama Mining Association. Uh, do we support the ADEMS draft permit for the safe closing and capping in place of the CCR impoundment at Plant Berry? Our association supports this permit and Alabama Power's closure plan because we're confident that it will protect both public human health and the environment. Much of my comments are based on the fact that Alabama Power followed each and every rule established by EPA and ADEM for the closure of, of a CCR impoundment. Businesses like the, Alabama, my, like the mining companies I represent here in Alabama can and will follow strict, complex, and costly environmental regulations in order to protect human health and the environment. Uh, day in and day out, regulated businesses abide by each and every rule established by EPA and ADEM. It's essential that regulated businesses be provided with regulatory certainty when they follow uh, all the rules that have been put in place. Uh, what businesses of all sizes cannot afford and the business community as a whole must always reject is an attempt to move the goalpost once the rules have been clearly established. Tonight's public hearing marks a milestone in a decades-long process to end the antiquated storage of coal ash and open impoundments. Uh, the rules used to develop the plan for closing the CCR impoundment at Barry were developed by EPA under the Obama administration and were left largely unchanged by the Trump administration EPA. Uh, I think that bears repeating again that both uh, the EPA under both President Obama and President Trump agreed that closing and sealing the CCR impoundment in place is both safe and effective. 
Uh, the arguments made by bait keepers, Sierra Club, are not new. Uh, these groups made the same arguments to EPA when the federal CCR rules were proposed, and President Obama's own EPA soundly rejected those arguments against closure in place being an option. Uh, in addition to my professional interest in this issue, I also have a personal one. I was born in Mobile, and Alabama's Gulf Coast is a special place to me. Um, I have a passion for uh, scuba diving and spearfishing. I'm looking forward to the day that I can share my passion for the water with my four-year-old son. Uh, I would not support this permit if I thought there was a chance that closing um, the very impoundment in place would negatively impact our coast and the fish that I love to harvest and feed my family. Uh, the real risk to our coast in the Gulf is delaying action. The sooner the work begins to close in place the Clamp Berry CCR impoundment, uh, the sooner the risk of an unlikely but, but potentially catastrophic failure like the one experienced in Kingston, it, once, that's, once the dewatering starts, that becomes virtually impossible. And that's really the risk we hope that ADEM will, will focus on and issue the permit in its draft form as quickly as possible. I also want to thank you guys for coming down here and, and really uh, going out of your way to make this accessible to the public and safe in this covert environment. So thank you all. Would you all like me to leave a copy? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. David Rogers. Good evening, Mr. Rogers. Good evening. How are you? Fine. If you could, uh, if you're okay with taking off your mask, yeah, be great. With, uh, go ahead and if you can restate your name. Certainly. Uh, any interest or organization you represent, of course, speak clearly so the court board can take down your testimony. But keep in mind, this is not a question and answer session. And then you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use this whole seven I minutes. I understand long. that. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> well, you thank much. you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Rogers. Uh, I serve as the Vice President of Economic Development for the Mobile Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're the lead economic development agency for the city and the county of Mobile. Uh, and I'm here tonight to represent the Mobile Area Chamber of Commerce and approximately 2,000 plus business members uh, that make up our organization. Our organization represents the voice of business for the Mobile community. And I'm here tonight to fully support Alabama Power's request to issue permits to allow closure in place at Plant Berry. Uh, a couple of uh, key points that I'd like to point out. Uh, the EPA has approved the closure in place method of sealing ash in place, deeming it just as pro protective to the environment as removing ash uh, and transporting it elsewhere. Both the closure methods, seal in place and closure by removal, require Alabama Power to meet the same groundwater standards, uh, performance standards that are required. Sealing, in the, sealing the site in place avoids all potential safety issues that can arise from trucking large volumes of coal ash through Alabama communities for decades. Uh, Alabama Power's closure and corrective action plan was developed by multiple third-party experts. The plan will not only achieve compliance with groundwater protection standards, but will also use the latest technology. Ongoing monitoring ensures the protection of our water quality for decades to come. The sampling and monitoring follows proven methods and meets all state requirements. Testing is conducted at accredited laboratories using advanced technologies. Results of that testing is shared publicly with state regulators. Uh, an independent third party has concluded that even a 500 year floodplain with an additional five feet of storm surge shows absolutely no impact on the site's existing dike wall. The existing dike is five feet higher than the highest flood ever recorded near the site. And Plant Berry lies outside the largest mapped FEMA hurricane surge zones, the most severe hurricanes ever along the Gulf Coast, including Katrina, Ivan, Nate, Sally, and Zeta, produced river stage elevations more than 15 feet below the crest of the existing dike. At Plant Berry, material will be excavated and moved further away from the, from the water creating a buffer of up to 750 yards from the river. And in some places, this will amount to the distance of more than seven football fields. The actual size of the pond is going to be reduced by over 45%. The company will use advanced engineering practices to construct a redundant dike system and a retaining wall as part of an additional increased protective measures over and above well of what is requ required. Um, you know, I would just tell you 
Alabama Power has been a top-notch corporate citizen for this community and for the state of Alabama. Well over 100 years of service to this state and the economic well-being creating hundreds of thousands of high-paying jobs uh, in all of our communities. Mobile would not be where we are without the efforts of Alabama Power in this community and we are gladly to be here tonight uh, to be in full support with them. So I appreciate your time and thank you for allowing me to come in. Thank you very much. Quinn. Quinn. Yeah. Miss Quinn, you're you're uh, more than welcome to take off your mask and you have if you're comfortable doing that. We'll get you to restate your name and any organization that you uh, represent. Of course, speak clearly into the microphone so the court reporter can take down your testimony. Keep in mind, this is not a question and answer. We're just here to listen to what you have to say. And then, uh, just remember, you got seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes if you don't want. I to. won't. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Debbie Quinn. I'm from Montrose, Alabama, and I'm not representing anybody but myself, but I grew up in Fairhope. Uh, as you can tell from the little spots on my head, too much sun worshiping and um, no, no sunscreen back then. It was baby oil. <laughs> so with that in mind, we've learned a lot about skin cancer, but we've also learned a lot about coal ash and dams and um, I just think that Alabama Power should move the coal ash. Um, the dam it was built in 1951, probably a little earlier than my skin cancer probably started, but um, we know that it's leaching into groundwater, and so that won't quit. That's not going to stop, no matter what they do. So they need to pull it out so that they can stop that lynche. Um, the dam's earthen, and we know we're getting more storms more flooding, more rains, heavier rains. And uh, when I was, I was a council member with the city of Fairhope, and at the time the average rainfall was about 48 inches to 50 inches a year. Now it's up to 60 to 62. So big difference in, from 1997 to now. So I hope that you will keep that in mind and will deny the permit so that we can continue having fishing and swimming and I'd have to worry about coal ash. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Larry, Mary you. Good evening. Good evening. Larry, I'm sorry, you'll have to pronounce your name again. If you oh, take me take years to learn it. So. You're welcome to take off your mask I am? if you're comfortable okay. doing it. Of course, I'll get you to restate your name uh, in any interest or organization that you represent. Of course, speak clearly into the microphone so the court report can take down your testimony. And keep in mind, this is not a question and an answer. This is just you telling us what you want us to hear. I understand. And uh, you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes. Right. I won't use it all. all right. I'll give you some back. Okay, thanks, sir. I'm, uh, I'm Larry Maryhugh. I'm president of the Warrior Tom Big B Waterway Association. Uh, our organization uh, represents the river system that runs from just north of Birmingham down through uh, Tuscaloosa, Demopolis, Jackson, Alabama, and into the Port of Mobile. I represent uh, approximately 100 companies that belong to our organization. And they include industry, businesses, municipalities, uh, utilities, any company that needs the river system to be a safe and efficient system for the company's livelihood. And uh, so we pay very much attention to permits that are uh, being offered and make sure the, what the impact might or might not be on the river system. Uh, Alabama Power is one of my member companies and someone I know very well. Uh, the company hired uh, two companies to do their engineering study, which I'm sure you're aware of, Wood Environmental and Infrastructure Solutions, which is a, an international company, huge, and Hydro Engineering Solutions, both of which are well known to ADM. Uh, so we don't need to evaluate their expertise. But both of these companies concluded in their study that the proposed closure system is not at risk from any storm surge or floods that might occur. And the system that's proposed by the power company, of course, 
is a major concern to many people, but that's that should be off the table. Certainly, we look closely at those permits that could impact the river system because we're very concerned about what could impact and keep. Our system has to be safe and efficient. Companies rely upon it to move their raw materials and their product to market, and uh, many other companies use it for the processing or for a multitude of reasons, which y'all are very familiar with. And we're satisfied, our organization is satisfied based upon looking at those studies that those two major companies conducted, that the proposed permits as put before you uh, should not impact the river system in any negative way. So we recommend uh, as an organization that you do grant the permit. That's my statement. Well, thank you, sir. I told you I was going to give you time back. Okay. And I have letters yes, sir, to submit. You, you, you can leave that with me if you Okay. Want. Thank you, uh, sir. Is, okay. is your name on, the, on your letter? Now? It's on the letter. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Wait, perfect. Hey, good it's evening. Part of the list, but part 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 you're fine. Okay. You're welcome to remove your mask if you're comfortable okay. doing yeah. so. And I'll get you to restate your name and any interest or That's organization fine. that you represent. Of course, speak clearly okay. so the court reporter can take your testimony. Okay. Uh, remember, this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to listen to what you have to say. Yes, sir. And you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole I will time. try not to. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, my name is Blake Hardwick, but spelled with C-H at the end. It's B-L-A-K-E. H-A-R-D-W-I-C-H. -H. And first of all, I want to thank you all for your patience and your time for allowing me to, to make comments. And I know you've had quite a crowd today, so thank you for your, your patience and your to be commended for, for sitting through uh, so many comments from different stakeholders throughout. But um, So I, uh, I represent the Energy Institute of Alabama. I serve as executive director. Uh, the Energy Institute was created in 2016 with a vision to combine Alabama's research and development assets with our natural resources to strengthen, uh, strengthen the energy energy the energy industry, support our customers, meet demands, grow economic development, and also promote public policies that would help uh, keep our energy uh, reliable, affordable, and clean. Uh, the Energy Institute is made up of Alabama Power, Power South, TVA, the Alabama Rural Electric Cooperative Association, uh, Electric Cities of Alabama, and the Alabama Municipal Electric Authority. Um, I'm here today just to speak on the, the permit uh, and, uh, to, to close in place uh, by Alabama Power and um, I'm, I announced yesterday uh, that we commissioned a independent study of all the coal ash sites in Alabama. We hired a firm, uh, Pila Geo Environmental, who's an Alabama-based firm but they're nationally and internationally known for their environmental services. And uh, the independent study uh, on Plant Berry uh, said that it was safe and secure to close in place at the site. And I will read a little bit from the study, if I may now. Um, the lady, the individual that was in charge of the study had 40 plus years in hydrogeological uh, investigations. Her name is Lois D. George, and she's a professional licensed engineer, I mean, geologist within the state. So quoting from the, the study, uh, all coal ash storage sites across Alabama can be safely and effectively closed in place in accordance with federal and state regulations. As you all know, there's two ways. One must close the existing sites by either leaving the ash in place with a final cover system or removing the ash and relocating it to another location. What I want to get across is that it's important for the public and for ADM to know and to understand that closing in place is a legal and safe approach for dealing with coal ash. And while opponents of closure in place have tried to depict this approach as illegal and uncommon, more than half of all the coal ash in the South is being closed safely in place rather than being trucked through and to other communities 
and compounding other environmental issues. This recent independent study that I've referenced clearly shows that plans to close in place are safe and technically sound and effective. While every coal ash site is unique, applications to close in place commonly involve removing and treating existing water within the site, reducing the site's footprint to move it from uh, bodies of water such as nearby rivers, enhancing flood protection and strengthening our protective systems, covering the site with a multi-layer impermeable cap, and implementing an aggressive post-closure 30-year program of monitoring, inspection, maintenance, record keeping, and reporting to ensure the safety of the local environment and surrounding water sources. For example, Alabama Power's application for Plant Berry involves consolidating the current coal ash site by reducing the ash footprint from 600 acres to 300 acres. These actions move the site farther from the Mobile River. A secondary 22-foot dike will be built higher than any Mobile River crest ever recorded. A separate hydro hydrology report shows that even a 500-year flood with an additional five feet of storm surge showed no impact on plant berry or its ash pond. As stated by the individual that did this independent study, Alabama Power has proposed, consistent with regulatory criteria, to close its coal ash impoundment at plant berry by closure in place. Once executed, this comprehensive and robust closure program will establish containment of the coal ash material and redundant safety and environmental protection controls. The technology and engineering exists to seal this material right, it is, right where it is in a way that is environmentally responsible. Thank you. Thank you very much. William Chambers? Yeah. I'll just let you know. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. Chambers. How you doing? If you could, uh, if you're okay with removing your mask, you're welcome to do oh, so. Okay. I, I'm, a, I'm a preacher, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'll get you, if, if you can, restate your name and any interest or organization you represent and, and do it clearly, you know, in the microphone so the court reporter can take down your testimony. Okay, I'm William T. Chambers. Well, one more thing. Just uh, just remember this is not a question and answer session. We're just here to, to hear you out. Okay. And then also, you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes if you don't want to. I did tell you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Don't give a free job, Mike. I'm William T. Chambers, and I'm uh, from Creole, Alabama. I'm a minister and a pastor in the community. Uh, founded uh, Cornelia Family Worship Center there. My statement is, uh, I'm a son of the soil. I was born and raised in uh, Mobile County. I'm a third generation Chambers. Jesse and Estelle's third son, Charlotte and John's grandson. I lived here all of my life. In Creola, 62 of them of my 70 years have been spent in Creole, Alabama. I'm a father and a and a grandfather. So there are two generations already here behind me. I didn't come here to wait my turn to talk and to give you a lot of statistics and read off scientifically research graphs because I know everybody already done all of that. I'm here for the two generations that's behind me. They probably not able to speak for themselves. I think first off that Plant Barry has been a uh, and is now a, a great corporate neighbor. I think that has been good for the community. I've watched them over the years as a member of LCAP in, uh, in our area. Lemoyne community advisory panel and I, I, I watched the other plants as well and they are 
uh, striving to do things that make our community better. I think that they've been good uh, for the community as a whole, but, but that ash pond, it needs to be moved, not kept. Too close to the river. You see, we got a chance to avoid a catastrophic disaster before it happens. Not like the oil spill in the Gulf. We sitting on a fast moving river. Flowing downstream through the delta and into our beautiful Mobile Bay. So we got a chance to do something before it happens. We don't want to destroy our beautiful river that I sat on the banks as a child and caught my first fish sitting next to my father and my brothers on a cane pole. We have an obligation, yes, an obligation to preserve the delta and the bay right now. Not 20 years later trying to figure out what to do to clean it up. We can do that now. Continue to be that good corporate neighbor plant bearer. So my grands and great grands and, and, and others can experience the same excitement that I did enjoying the Delta as I did. Let's don't have to say, why didn't they do something? Move the ash pond. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Robert Kennedy Jr. Good evening, Mr. Kennedy. Good evening. How y'all doing today? Fine, sir. You're welcome to take off your mask if you're comfortable in doing that. Uh, I am. I'm get you to restate your name uh, in any organization that you represent uh, and, and do that clearly into the mic so so the court reporter can, can take down your testimony. Uh, okay. Just keep in mind, this is not a question and answer session. Sure. We're here just to hear you out. All right. And then also keep in mind that you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes <laughs> if you want to. All right. We're trying to make it a little easy for you guys. Thank I'm you, sure. sir. Okay. Um, my name is Robert Kennedy, Jr. Uh, I am a native of Pritchard, Alabama. Um, left home at 18 years old, did my military career, uh, did a career in Fortune 500, and then made a decision to come back home. And the reason why I did that is because I just wanted to have a positive impact on my community. And one of the things that struck me uh, as I made my way back home were the number of times that we're having a conversation after something catastrophic has happened. With regards to Pritchard specifically, we had a Mercaptan uh, spill that happened here in, in 2008. Um, and have had a number of hearings since that time where we talked about things like nosebleeds and scratchy throats and respiratory problems. Um, I've been familiar with the things that have happened in Africa Town, where the group has talked about uh, over incidences of, of cancer in the community there. And I think it's really important before anything catastrophic has happened for us to take a little bit of time to decide what we can do to mitigate the risk of something actually happening. And so what I'm asking is uh, that a little bit more due diligence be done. We understand that there are two options on the table right now, cap and place is an option, and then actually removing and relocating. Um, and I think that we as the public should really have a full sense of what both of those options mean, um, not only from a monetary standpoint, because we know those options are very expensive, but understanding that if, in fact, money was no object, which of the two solutions would we go with? Uh, we know that everything that is made at some point in time will fail. Uh, we know about what happened after Hurricane Florence in North Carolina. We know what happened up in the Tennessee Valley area as well. 
And so I do just like to see just a little bit more due diligence before a final decision is made so that we can truly understand as a customer what the impact is to us monetarily if the more expensive option is chosen. Um, but most importantly, which of the options would actually mitigate the risk so that we're not having a similar conversation after something catastrophic happens like we were doing after Mercaptan, like we were doing in Africa Town. And that's all I wanted to share with you guys this evening. Thank you guys so much for coming down and actually listening to the public. I really do appreciate the effort that you guys put in to do that. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have a good evening. Thank Travel you. safe. Yes, sir. Thank you. Keith Johnson. Hey. Hey. Good evening. So Good evening. How are y'all? Fine, fine. How are you? Doing well. Y'all yeah. making it through? Yes, sir. You're welcome to, to take your mask off if you want. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I'll and, take it uh, and again, it, it, uh, it, you know, restate your name for the record yep. in the interest of the organization you represent. And then, uh, of course, you know, we have testimony being taken by court order, so yep. to make sure she can hear you good. Okay. And then, uh, remember, this is not a question and answer session. Uh, we're here just to listen to you and what you have to say. You have seven minutes, but you don't have to use the whole seven minutes if you want. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Y'all have a, is there a clock or something? There it is. Oh, right there. It's okay. <laughs> last, the last time y'all had a big monitor that we could see that was kind We're of We're downsized. <laughs> downsized? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, she'll, let me know when I get close. She'll let you know when she gets okay. when get down to a minute. All right. That sounds good. Okay. My name is Keith Johnson. I'm the director of the Alabama Office of the Southern Environmental Law Center. Thank you for this public meeting concerning the draft CCR permit for Plant Berry. While we are still in the process of reviewing the draft permit and supporting materials for plant berry, coal ash, and gypsum disposal sites, this evening I plan to provide just a summary of our comments and we'll provide more thorough comments by the comment deadline. Alabama Power's uh, plant berry ash pond is built on a floodplain next to the Mobile River on top of a former creek. It's almost completely surrounded by the Mobile River and the discharge canal from the facility. It's polluting ground and surface water it will constantly be a threat of catastrophic spill and it's sitting in the groundwater. The ash pond is also susceptible to hurricanes and large rain events. And it is right next to one of the most intact natural areas in Alabama, the Mobile Tensile Delta, and just upstream from the city of Mobile and the Mobile Bay. This should never be the site of a permanent waste facility, especially one with known toxic pollution that Alabama Power cannot control. And ADEM would never permit a waste facility in an area like this today, but for the fact that the utility made the decision to put this there a long time ago. Furthermore, I would like to point out that Alabama Power created this problem when they chose to wet sluice the pollution to this site in an unlined pit next to the river. And well before the Kingston coal ash disaster in 2008, Alabama Power knew that the Berry Coal Ash Pond was contaminating waters of the state. In a report commissioned by EPA for possible Superfund listing at Plant Berry, the report states that arsenic was found in groundwater, surface, and subsurface soil and sediment samples in amounts up to 80 times background. This report was written, this report was written in 1991, 30 years ago. Alabama Power could have moved the toxic ash to a safe, dry, lined, modern landfill, disposed of it as required of other industrial processes or even household garbage, but Alabama Power chose not to. Instead, the utility put the burden of this pollution and the cost on Alabamans, Alabamians and Alabama's environment. Now, when seeking an ADEM permit to leave the ash in place, Alabama Power is yet again externalizing the cost of this pollution and making sure that Alabamians continue to pay for their bad decisions. The draft permit and permit application lack sufficient analysis data and provisions in key areas such as groundwater characterization, impoundment stability, flood analysis, and closure planning. The draft permit also allows future groundwater degradation, future impoundment of leachate, and contamination of state waters by post-closure discharges. For example, we don't even know the true extent of the groundwater contamination and it has never been fully characterized in the permit application. There should be modeling to show the true extent of this contamination. We cannot determine the depth of the coal ash and how much of the coal ash will be left in the groundwater when we have inadequate characterizations of the coal ash's relation to the groundwater itself. 
a final permit should not be issued until we have this information. Furthermore, capping the coal ash will not prevent groundwater contamination. The groundwater table in this area is absolutely tied to the water levels of the adjacent, adjacent Mobile River. We know that coal ash will sit in groundwater and continue to contaminate groundwater even under a cap. Groundwater is in the ash and it will move through the site and infiltrate the ash up from below. Even if the proposed cap has zero defects and allow no infiltration from directly over the top of the ash, ash, which is highly unlikely for eternity, there will still be contaminants leaching from the ash into surrounding waters. In addition, nothing in the permit application or the draft permit evaluates or requires an estimation of the volume of water that can be expected to infiltrate into the covered ash through the groundwater, inf infiltration through the cap itself, or contamination up from below. A state CCR permit should not be issued until this information is provided. We also know that contamination currently discharges from the site. CCR contaminated groundwater has been transported and accumulated in wetlands and stream bottoms beyond the geographic scope of what Alabama Power has provided. There is no indication or investigation of that accumulation of CCR related contaminants outside of the ash pond. In addition, there should be modeling to determine how long it might take to achieve complete remediation of the site and a reduction of the contamination to groundwater protection standards. The CCR waste will, all be, will also be subject to serious erosive forces from the river itself. Plant Berry's location next to the coast makes it certain that high water events will happen with frequency. All sides of the impoundment will eventually be subject to erosion as the river's channel moves. No or little information about these processes was found in the permit application. The 30-year post-closure period is wholly inadequate to maintain a permanent waste disposal facility in a dynamic location such as this. The draft permit needs to identify who will be responsible and set aside dedicated funding for monitoring and maintenance of the facility including cap replacement at necessary intervals in perpetuity. The utility should also provide public information which compares excavation and removal or clean closure versus Alabama Power's current plans to cap in place. We also need to understand more about the gypsum ponds permitting to receive increased coal ash waste and the issues now with the increase, the statistically significant increases of boron and other contaminants from the gypsum pond. In short, this draft permit does not satisfy the requirements of the federal and state CCR rules. ADEM should go back and require Alabama to provide information that truly shows the extent of the contamination and how Alabama Power will solve this problem long term under the current draft permit. Alabama Power wants to create an unlined dump next to the Mobile River and a floodplain upstream from the Tensaw Delta, Mobile, and Mobile Bay for eternity. Closure of the plant berry ash pond requires a permanent solution. This is not it. The facility violates the law now and will continue to do so under the draft permit proposed by ADEM. How did I end it? Do have some time? Thank you. Mr. Johnson, did you say you were going to submit comments? Later? Yeah, we're going to submit some more comments. All right, so here we go. All right, thank you all. Thank appreciate, you, it. appreciate it. We'll see you later. Yes, sir. Good evening. How are you? Finally, we get to meet. Yes, <laughs> if you could uh, uh, state clearly in the microphone uh, your name and any organization that you represent. Of course, keep in mind that the court reporter's taking down your testimony. Yes. Just remember this is not a question and answer session. Just listen to what you have to Thank you. Thanks and for providing the opportunity. You've got seven minutes, but you don't have to use all seven minutes unless you want to. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Annette Sanders, a basic scientist and engineer, founder of Sanders Engineering and Analytical Services. I did the ambient monitoring and documentation of air pollution point sources in Mobile, Ball, and in Escambia counties in the late 1960s and the early 70s. I was before EPA. Um, my monitoring results and WinRose data provided the support for air pollution uh, standards and safe levels of the air pollution laws and regulations in Alabama. And I'm kind of proud of that. My company's still going. Uh, it's been going 42 years. Um, first of all, we had some 
just static sampling devices, lead peroxide candles, dust ball buckets, and high volume samples, samplers. And then I got my first uh, continuous monitoring trailer. And it was at WKRG sampling um, and transmitting site on Telegraph Road. So I want to say just a little bit about sometimes how simple a very serious problem can be. The fix I'm talking about. Um, the, right away I saw a, a spike in hydrocarbons. And about three hours later, after the sun hit the hydrocarbons, I got a big spike in ozone. And uh, I knew hydrocarbons you know, were close by. It was the state docks. They were uh, heavily polluting and wasting uh, petroleum at the state docks. And the simple fix was no floating roofs at that time. We put, this is before EPA, we put floating roofs on those tanks, they're there today, and we painted them instead of gray, black, and navy to disappear, we painted, painted them white and silver. Sometimes, um, uh, if you just look around, there's solutions to a lot of the problems, and if we work together, we can find those. So, uh, after the WKRG uh, site, I uh, had two more continuous monitoring sites, one in Midtown, and the important one was the AXIS site. It was uh, at Kane Service Station in AXIS, Alabama. And of course there, uh, I uh, was right downwind from Berry Steam Plant and Stauffer Core Dolls. And uh, those were really, really heavily polluted areas. Uh, these sources, uh, uh, after about 72, had to, uh, we had our laws, EPA was established in 70, uh, December of 70, and then we right away started using all of this data that we collected through the Regional Planning Commission's contract and with health departments, we, had, we found uh, um, uh, that where our trouble points were in our whole country. Um, we had uh, compliance schedules that were required then. And uh, the first compliance schedule I did was for Alabama Power Company. Edmund Covington, the plant manager, said all of a sudden he had a compliance schedule to get out. And uh, I thought I was just going up to kind of do him a favor and help him out because uh, I, I had just heard that he was having problems with his uh, compliance schedule. And uh, that was my first job whenever I started my company, Sanders Engineering. He's probably my first client. And I am, so I'm pretty close to Alabama uh, Power Company in many ways. Uh, I uh, did their compliance scheduling for many years until they established their own uh, compliance department and testing uh, group. Um, and at that time, I could call up and I could talk to them about most anything, especially about concerns about tests. So, uh, I feel like uh, maybe even some of the, the methods we put in place to control air pollution resulted in some of the problems we have in the ash pond storage because we had bag houses, we had electrostatic precipitators, we had wet scrubbers, and we got all of that ash. It had to go somewhere. So I never did water quality uh, during those years, only, and I still do compliance scheduling 42 years later for a lot of the industry in the southeast. Um, so uh, water quality in our rivers, streams, and oceans must be protected at all costs. I was recently um, uh, introduced to some like-minded problem solvers, and that's what I consider myself, became very excited 
about a mechanical and safe filtering device which takes polluted water um, from petroleum and power pr uh, production, including coal ash, sitting below the groundwater table, and frack in residual water, purifies the water, and separates the, the solids for recycling. Um, the results from the mechanical filtering system that we have, we, um, uh, I started talking about this, about this um, results, and it also complies with uh, method 1311. So I spent the last few months trying to talk to anyone, including ADEM, about alternatives to polluted water belonging to municipalities, shipping companies and bilge water, and also ash ponds. Uh, no one will talk. And I can understand that there's a lot of problems uh, with just talking to anyone. But I've been in the business for a long time. So I say approving this plan violates the CCR rule, violently violates it. And I say Alabama Power, look for cost-effective alternatives to the cap-in-place plan. Working together, we can find a long-term solution to clean up the ash improve the water quality and recycle the ash into much needed building materials and infrastructure that our company needs, our whole country needs right now. Thank you. Thanks ma'am, thank you. And I'm pretty passionate and I'm going to trust that y'all are going to make a good decision on this cap because it's too risky. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Yeah, no, that's okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and do. Don't need a break. No, sir. No, sir. You're fine. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just right. because she's yeah. got to get that fired up, Mr. Coffee, and then uh, I'm. We're good to go. We're on. Miss Victoria. Yes. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, Mr. Coffee, uh, if you could, uh, you could take off your mask and you have. Uh, I hate them. Okay. Uh, if you could uh, state your name again and any interest or organization that you uh, represent, uh, keep in mind the court reporter's taking your testimony uh, and, and speak so she can hear you. And remember, this is not a question and answer session. Uh, we're just here to listen to you. Sure. And then you've got seven minutes, but you don't have to take all the seven minutes if you don't want to. That's I'm, to I'm gonna try not. I'm trying to take. Okay. What I can. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you tell me when I start. Yes, sir. You, you, we are ready when you are, and she will let you know when you're down to a minute. Okay. If you go that far. All right. All right. Uh, my name is Glenn Coffey. I am uh, I'm here representing myself, but I'm also a uh, member of the Sierra Club here locally, as well as Baykeeper. And uh, I'm here as a private citizen today uh, because of my concern over the uh, situation with the uh, uh, disposal pond. Uh, I've lived in Mobile since 1973. I've fished and uh, hunted Mobile, Tennessee Delta the entire time and it is a, a gift from the nature, Mother Nature, and it's free and anything that we do to enjoy it is wonderful because the federal government, the state government, doesn't spend any money to, for that resource and to, we, we have a ticking time bomb with the uh, coal ash pond and uh, based on what we've seen in other places in the country. And uh, also just a little bit more about me, I am uh, I attended the University of Alabama and I have a BS and MS in aquatic biology. I worked for 31 years with the Corps of Engineers and I am now a, uh, unfortunately I'm still consulting in the environmental area. So I, I've come, and also I was the project manager for the Corps that uh, we were responsible for buying 20,000 acres in Mobile, Tennessee Delta as part of the 10 time mitigation program. And that is down the Mobile, Tennessee Delta Wildlife Management Area. So I have a lot of knowledge of the area as well, from both work and a private standpoint. Uh, I, I want to make certain that you know up front that I am totally opposed to capping in place the disposal area. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a ticking time bomb. We're lucky. We've been lucky for 75 years. And the reason I'm 
opposed to that is because the the uh, containment dike was built at a time when engineering standards were different and uh, the potential erosion issue we've been lucky for 70 years and uh, with the changing uh, situation with uh, sea level rise which means the river will rise higher than it is now and with the increasing storm intensities that we're having with tropical storms uh, the, it's just a matter of time before we're going to have a failure at, uh, since the dike is not uh, armored it never has been uh, and I, I'm not aware of if a, a Alabama Power has done a structural integrity study of, of by an independent, thoroughly independent engineering firm uh, because I don't trust Alabama Power because their bottom line is to make money and making money means you keep your costs down to operate. So I, I'm concerned about that. I, I haven't seen anything. If, if Alabama Power's got something that makes uh, ADEM comfortable, I, I hope they'll make it public because uh, I'm not as up on some of this as I wish I was. Uh, being involved in other things, I haven't had a chance. Uh, the, the, the other thing I've heard, I don't know whether it's true, but I understand that as part of the closure action, uh, ADEM is being is considering relaxing some of the water quality criteria because of the uh, the seepage and movement of water through the groundwater uh, that eventually makes it into the Mobile River. And I hope that's not the case. If it is, I'm opposed to that. We've got water quality standards that we should adhere to, and just because somebody wants to close and cap it in place doesn't negate the problem with water quality that we've had for years that will continue since the uh, site is unlined. Uh, now, don't get mad at me when I say this, but ADEM doesn't have the best reputations for standing up and fighting power and money in the state. So I'm afraid that uh, cap in place is going to win out. I hope that's not the case, but that's what my concern is. If that is happens, uh, that's why I'm saying I hope you guys don't take offense to that, but that's been my observation from years and years in this state. Not the individual people working there, but the, the way power works in this state is not really good for the environment of our, of our resources. Uh, that, so I'm thinking in the long term, and I'm opposed to this, it's going to cap in place. What I recommend that ADEM include in there because uh, the, I'm concerned about this phrase here, post-closure criteria in the proposed permit requires each unit to be maintained for a period of some time. I heard that that some time is 30 years. Well, 30 years in one day, the thing could fail if ADEM no longer does anything. Uh, that seems to be in perpetuity, and even if the land, so if Alabama Power is able to find a sucker to buy the property one day, then uh, uh, maintenance of the dike should go in perpetuity with the title to that property. I, I don't know what the plans are. But uh, it's, it's something, uh, time frame, uh, we can't risk that at loss. Now, the other thing, uh, this is the last thing I'd like to point out, is uh, I don't trust Alabama Power Company at all, and I don't trust ADEM. And I'm, again, because of, of how I've seen other permits handled, what I recommend is if this permit goes through is that there be an annual inspection of the dike that it be besides ADEM being included with Alabama Power that it be a uh, create an uh, interdisciplinary inter-entity team that would include uh, any other federal or state agency as well as the baykeeper at a minimum and hopefully some other uh, non 
government entity. Didn't like it. Yes, sir. Okay. You sure did. All right. Thank y'all very right. much. Thank you, sir. I, I, I'm not taking. Don't take offense at that, but y'all y'all hear it all the time. I'm certain because you don't work with uh, government money like you should. You work a lot on uh, what people pay permit fees for, and that's not right. They have to fund you like everybody else. Thank you, Thank y'all. I appreciate it. All right. Good evening, Mr. Pritchett. Uh, you're welcome to remove your mask if, you, if you're comfortable in doing that. I am most comfortable in doing that. Okay, and uh, I'll need to get you to, to state your name and any uh, interest or organization you represent. And of course, uh, speak clearly so the court court can take down your testimony. And then uh, remember, this is not a, a question of answer. Uh, we're here to listen to what you have to say. Uh, you'll have seven minutes, but don't want to use the whole set of minutes. <laughs> that's that's that. quite all right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll try to be brief. And uh, yeah, my name's James Pritchett. I uh, I live on the eastern shore, uh, just south of Fairhope. I was raised in a small town in Marengo County, and by the age of 30, I had gotten a wife and a geology degree from the University of Alabama and an engineering degree from Mississippi State, and uh, and a job with a multinational uh, oil company. And after 30 years, uh, a, a career as a reservoir engineer, I was fortunate to retire in 2019. And I'm not representing a company or an organization. I'm here as a concerned citizen. I, uh, I'm not an expert in anything, but I do know a little bit about fluid flow through porous media and uh, the, the energy industry. So uh, you've got my five-page white paper full of uh, references. And in short, uh, the science experiments as outlined in the permit application and the idea of leaving the coal ash in place at the very site in Bucks are dangerous, if not also criminal. Removal of the dangerous heavy metal laden coal ash and proper disposal away from sea level, away from hurricane paths, and away from one of the most important estuary systems in North America is the only long-term safe, guaranteed solution for centuries. The idea that Alabama Power Company can leave the coal ash in place and be free of any liability in only 30 years is unconscionable. I don't know if that's a federal law or state law, but it's absolutely unconscionable. If I read your public hearing statement correctly, the permittee, Alabama Power Company, is responsible for monitoring the water quality. So, you're putting the fox in charge of the hen house, and in the same document you state that permit establishes action requirements to remediate contamination when CCR constituents exceed acceptable levels. How the hell are you going to do that? You got some nanobots you're going to send down into the water table to get the heavies out of the aquifer system? You know, I, you can't get the, put the toothpaste back in the tube once it's out, gentlemen. You cannot. The BP or the Macondo spill comes to mind. That was a horrific, awful, tragic event. And maybe one of the saddest things about it is that it was preventable. It didn't have to happen. At this stage, the berry plant stuff is still preventable. You could still keep it from hurting us. I wonder, are you working with environmental agencies and utility companies in other states? Have you asked them what lessons learned and what best practices they're using to handle their unlined surface impoundments? Have you asked the residents of Wilmington, North Carolina or Kingston, Tennessee how effective their remediation efforts were? Were they able to put the toothpaste back in the tube? Let me talk for a minute about numeric simulation models. They can be very useful. They can be help us to understand complex processes. They can also lead to very wrong answers. One example is uh, the earth is warming. The earth is warming, right? We had Al Gore telling us that. And then when the data didn't match the models, it's, oh, well, the earth is cooling. And now they just blow it all off and say, don't pay attention to our models. It's man-made climate change that they keep shoving down our throat. Another more recent example of a numeric simulation model that was wrong is the Center for Disease Control in the COVID-19 predictions. Fortunately, they were wrong. The models that I used to run 
uh, in reservoir simulation, predict, making predictions were often overstated and wrong. Um, so you have to tie models to observe data. And when Alabama Power Company says that we don't need to worry about it breaching the dam, it'll never end up in the Mobile Tensile River. Hello? Just ask the simple question. If they say there's only a one in a million chance and you don't need to worry about it or whatever their, their numbers are, ask yourself the question, are there a million unlined surface impoundments in the United States? The answer is no. And the other question you might ask is, have there been any spills, numerous spills in lakes and rivers that have occurred across the country? And the answer is yes. So the observed data doesn't match what the Alabama Power Company predictions are saying regarding the danger posed by leaving the ash in place. The volume at the Berry plant is roughly the size of the Empire State Building. Imagine the Empire State Building floating down the river oozing toxic waste into Mobile Bay in the Gulf. That's, that's what you're faced with. That could happen. You know, there's, there's similar places to, to this and, and a catastrophic spill. A massive unlined surface facility like the Berry plant. Uh, it, this kind of stuff has occurred before. And, and if that, it occurred to that volume, it could make the Macondo, the BP spill, look like a gnat on an elephant's butt. But today you have the power to prevent it. Recently I sent a letter to one of our state representatives regarding this issue and I got back a prompt, nice reply, oh we love hearing from our constituents, yada yada yada. And then he said, oh have you seen the materials contained in this link? And it looked like more propaganda from Alabama Power Company. The governor and our elected officials are doing a poor job of leading. The state of Alabama is behind. You're behind Georgia, you're behind Tennessee, you're behind the Carolinas in handling this issue. If, you're, if our politicians, our elected representatives were paying attention and if the decision